I'm back at School 21. Um, I was here quite a long time ago um, and I'm so excited to be back. And today I'm joined um, by the wonderful Peter Hyman, who has co-founded Rethinking Assessment. We've been partnering with Rethinking Assessment. We started funding this year. And I was just so excited to talk to you because Rethinking Assessment is something that is top of my agenda. I think that the education system in the UK is far too focused on the exam system. And I just love everything that you're doing. So I'm just really intrigued to prick your brain, um, hear about the new learner profile. Please. Yeah. Thank no, you. Great to, have, you, great to you. have you here. Thank you. And it's so important, as you say, because the exam system, we think, is the big thing that's blocking a more expansive, more holistic education. And we know how unfair it is. We know that a third of young people are labelled or branded as failures every year because of the way uh, the, the uh, grades are distributed. We know that there are lots of mental health issues by the stress caused by exams. And we know that employers are saying that it's not actually giving them what they want when they come out the other end. So radical change is needed and we've been working hard not just to say what's wrong with the current system but to provide real solutions of what we can do going forward. And the learner profile is part of that solution we think which is in short, uh, to put it uh, bluntly, instead of leaving school with just a set of numbers and letters we want young people to leave school with a rounded digital learner profile that shows all the different things that they can do, all of their capabilities, how they think about learning, the things they've achieved outside of school. It's re really exciting. I'd love yeah. to see it. Would you be able to give me yes. a show? Yes, so the layout you can play with. But what it's got, and if I go through the elements, is this is a fictional student called Harriet who's in year 13. For this person, Harriet, to be describing what they enjoy doing, who they are as a learner, something about themselves to bring it alive. Of course, if it's a digital profile, it can be multimedia. And then there's a set of interests there, which again, if you click on that and you drill down on it, they could upload different evidence of their interests and what they've done and what they're proud of. Now, at the top left here, we've got the three C's, sometimes called the four C's, of creative thinking, collaboration, communication, and we call that sometimes oracy. And that is what employers are looking for. That's what they want in the workplace. And at the moment, it's not evidence in schools. So we put it there and we will work with schools to work out how you upload different evidence to show what a student can do. In. And you want this to be something that, that young people at school want to add to the whole time. And that is the sort of spirit of this. Mm. Teachers, of course, and for some students, they'll need more support from, student, for, from teachers. And at a younger age, we want this to be 4 to 18. You know, if you're a five-year-old, you will need a teacher mm. to help you. Oh, how great but, to start so yeah, young of, yes. and, and, and to watch how it changes yes. over time, to have yeah. that, that um, um, thing to keep for life as well. Yes. Brilliant. So if I move on to the me as a learner, what are your strengths? What have you overcome? What motivates you? What do you want to work on and get better at? Then the middle section is the qualifications, and we've divided it into three parts. The building blocks is about what you might call the basics. And literacy and numeracy are obvious ones there. We would add digital skills, which are increasingly important, and oracy, spoken skills. And so those could be evidenced by external exams or by other methods. And we're very keen on those being taken when ready. So the principle of a music exam, if you take grade four at the piano, you take it when you're ready. You don't just sit it when you're 16 like a GCSE. Everyone has to take it when they're 16. It um, takes the pressure off, doesn't it, it as well? It takes the pressure off 40 exams in one month uh, in June. Mm. And then for courses, again, this, you know, in other countries, there's far more of a tradition of majors and minors. At A-level, we're doing three A-levels and they're all the same size. So it's very possible the IB, International Baccalaureate, has a bit of that. And we think that's really important that you can take a number of courses but a, uh, that are minor courses. Yeah, I think, I think in this day and age when you know, all the statistics are saying that over the course of a lifetime, people are going to have multiple jobs yeah. and you're going to be yeah. changing your career so many times to be able to keep as broad as possible for as long it's, as possible just makes so much more so. sense. And this will also bridge once and for all the academic vocational divide, which is so toxic within education. So for everyone to do applied courses and interdisciplinary courses, there will be a bigger menu in future of courses rather than just doing the traditional ones that are happening at the moment. And then the third element of this is a personal project, that it's an interest of theirs, and that it is weighted so that it goes to their, the credits for their final qualification. Then at the bottom, again, really importantly, testimonials from employers and other organisations so that it connects young people to work. 
My Beautiful Work is a section that is all about your portfolio. So underpinning this profile is examples of your best work uh, and, and work you're proud of and showing the process of development, the multiple drafts you might have done of a piece of work to show how it's improved. I love that you have that a lot on the walls here yes. where you can see the first draft, second draft, yes. third draft. It's so yeah. brilliant to see the, how, how, how everyone's got so much better over time. Yeah, and it's that principle of craftsmanship, which in the real world, if we write an article or something, we would do multiple drafts and ask people to give comments and, 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 and all the rest of it. And then my achievements, this could be in school, Duke of Edinburgh, or it could be out of school, that you're a church youth leader or you've got a drama qualification. So all of this can be done immediately in terms of, and we're getting schools to say, well, let's just pilot this so that young people are leaving with more than just a set of numbers and letters. The game changer in the future, though, which would require changes, is to say, well, let's weight the sections of here away from just counting the GCSEs and A-levels. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Having something that's that tangible way that we could be doing assessing our young people, and this is just so broad and it's so brilliant that we can see this is just going to show a whole character of a person, yes. Yes. Uh, not just their academic ability. And it's exactly what businesses are needing nowadays. Um, so I think you're going to get a lot, a lot of support for this. And it looks brilliant too. It's yes. been beautifully yes. done. H how do you think this will get taken forward? How, how, what's the next step for the learner profile? So we're really excited in the autumn that a number of them are going to trial this alongside their normal ways of recruiting to see if this produces better results and gives them a better snapshot of who they're trying to take on, whether it is a university or an employer. Mm. I also think it also gives that thing, if you don't have the all about the end exam, people start to love learning more. Yes. Because you can actually deep dive on what kids' interests are, as opposed to having to be like, no, we've got to skim past that because we've got the next thing on the syllabus that we need to be uh, ticking the boxes and getting it into your head for the your exam. Well, the perverse incentives of just working to the exams, as you say, that it narrows the curriculum, it narrows the number of subjects, it crowds out, as we know, creative subjects. Only 6% of young people after the age of 14 do any art, drama or music oh, I didn't because, know they're, because they're not doing it for a GCSE, so they just stop doing it. Mm. And you're not doing the stuff that you love, yes. the stuff that you, you, yes. you want to do because you enjoy it, not just because you're good at it. Yeah, exactly. like some people might not be good enough to do it at a GCSE, but they absolutely love Want it. To do music or yeah, whatever. they love it. Yeah. It's going to take bravery, isn't it, to do something new. But I think the concept is so brilliant. It's so great for, for employers, for universities to have that thing that could be replacing the, the existing norm.